One of the words of wisdom that I really wish I had been given when I was going through the college process was look for a college that's going to be flexible. So I've changed my major a few times, but uh, I came to college thinking I was going to be a music major because I'm a percussionist. Then I realized that I love music, but not so much that I need to major in it. So then I decided to do psychology for a little bit, and I liked it, but I didn't fall in love with it. Then I wanted to do journalism, again, liked it, didn't love it, and nothing seemed to click. But then I took this really inspiring uh, philosophy class actually with some of the amazing professors that we have here. It challenged me to write in ways that I've never had to write before. It challenged me to think in ways I've never had to think before. And it kind of helped me in every aspect of my life, including music, because it forced me to just retrain the way that I was used to thinking. And I think that's something that's super essential in college. This is the time where you try things that you've never tried before and when you sort of reevaluate the connections and the loves that you've had for a long time. The way that I discovered that music isn't what I want to do was by trying out three different clubs on my home campus of Lehman, two other clubs, you know, at Macaulay Central. Try out for that dance class even though you don't know how to dance, you know, join the radio station even though you have zero experience with DJing. The worst that's going to happen is you discover that this isn't for you, but the best thing that can happen is you realize that there's a part of you that you didn't know existed and it's going to help you become a bigger, stronger, and just more interesting person. Hey everyone, my name is Victoria Smith and I'm a rising junior at Lehman College and I am the class of 2020. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for our very first open house dedicated exclusively to counselors. Um, I'm Jeffrey Glick. I'm the Vice President of External Relations at Macaulay Honors College. And I'm joined uh, today's open house with two of my colleagues, Mark Cioli, the University Director of Admissions and Recruitment, and Dr. Joseph Ugarest, our Chief Academic Officer. Um, I'm especially pleased that you're all joining us for our very first open house for counselors. During the, the pandemic, we had to really change our operations from in-person open houses to all remote and online. And that, that adversity did result in some innovation and it, it allowed many more students to experience an open house at Macaulay than had happened in the past. And we're delighted that we can now welcome so many of you to join us for this open house online. Um, we're going to start with a presentation from Dr. Ugaritz on the academic program at Macaulay, and then Mark Choley will share with you the application process, some of the things that have changed, where the challenges are, and we'll make sure that we've got a good 20 minutes or so at the end for questions. However, if you have burning questions, don't feel like you have to wait until then. Um, you can post your questions in the Q&A, and we have some staff on the back end who will begin to answer them in real time for you. Um, so thanks again for coming, everyone. And uh, Joe, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Jeffrey. And, and uh, hello, everybody. Welcome. It, it's, uh, I'm saying welcome as if we were in a physical space, which we're not. But in any case, we have feel a sense of community with you because uh, we, we really want to communicate and get you to understand what it is that makes Macaulay so special. Um, and I'm, I'm going to focus really on the academic side. I've had a, a kind of a long career in higher education and I've worked at a lot of different schools. And I think I wanted to start with some color commentary about just what it is that, that I see as so special and unique uh, uh, to Macaulay. I, I hear a lot from a lot of different people about the, the advantages of their college and all colleges have their own advantages. There's things that make Macaulay very different. Um, and one of those I think is that we are a, a small college within an enormous university. Uh, the City University of New York, if you count everybody involved, all the students, faculty, staff, is the size of the city of Boston. So it's easy for a person to get lost in such a large university, except that Macaulay Honors College has the uh, character of a small liberal arts college like those famous leafy green campuses uh, that, that you see in the ads. The difference is that we have that small college atmosphere, but we also have all the resources and the energy and the talent and the enormous diversity that you find in a large uh, university. So it's, it's kind of the best of both worlds there, along with being in New York City, uh, which uh, is, as, as I'm sure you all know, a vibrant, diverse, and exciting place. 
connected to this uh, being small within big is our focus on advising. Now, I was going to talk about academics, but we really see advising as key to the academic success of our students. Every student has an advisor who sticks with that student throughout their college career. Other schools I've been involved with, advising is usually done by a faculty member who's sitting in the office and the students come in and maybe it's the same person and maybe it's not, and maybe they have a connection and maybe they don't. At Macaulay, our advisors know our students. They know their academic progress. They know what's going on with their lives and what their interests are and what their goals and, and, uh, and talents are. Um, that's part of our academic philosophy of really trying to educate the whole student. Uh, we're looking at students not just as, as brains uh, floating in a glass jar that need to have information poured into them, but as human beings with a, a range of interests and a range of abilities and a, a, a wide range of kind of uh, uh, achievements that they can bring to Macaulay and that Macaulay can help them to, to grow and expand. So that's kind of what makes Macaulay different in, in my eyes, but as to what students can expect academically from Macaulay, I think there's really three main things that I would I fo focus on, three main things that we're, that we're looking for and that we want to nourish and encourage in our students. Um, the first of those is, is probably kind of obvious. We're an honors college. So we need students who are high achievers academically who more than that are motivated to do well in their studies, to do the extra work, to take the extra assignments, to do the reading and to, and to pay attention uh, more than just to what's required, but to what's core to their learning. So they've gotta be motivated, not just for grades, but for actual learning and progress towards their own goals. Connected to that, connected to motivation, we're really interested in a, a, a kind of diversity, an intellectual diversity. Uh, we're interested in all kinds of diversity. Of course, we want students who represent the, the range of, of people who live in, in the city and the state of New York. But as you saw in the introductory video, we really specialize in nurturing students whose interests take them in a variety of different directions. When I first came to Macaulay, I, I sat uh, in a in a, a graduation ceremony. Actually, my, my first day of, at Macaulay was graduation uh, 14 years ago. And I looked through the, the graduation program, the commencement program, and I was astonished at how many double and triple majors I saw. And, and a couple even had four majors. And they were not always clearly logically connected. Uh, they would be, you know, uh, neuroscience, biology, and music or philosophy and engineering. Uh, and to an outsider, that sounds like, wow, this kid just couldn't make up his mind. But in fact, when you talk to our students, as, as you saw in the video, they are able to express connections that really people hadn't seen before. We're looking for students who can, through this sort of intellectual diversity, uh, really make new knowledge. Uh, and, and that's something that we see every day among our students. And the last thing that, that's kind of connected to those two, to, to motivation and, and to diversity, is a sense of curiosity. You know, Macaulay is about exploration, I like to tell students. It's about trying to find pathways that didn't exist before. It's about trying to see connections, to hold ideas that seem contradictory, to hold them in your head at the same time, and to figure out how they apply one to the other, and even to invent new academic disciplines and, and new careers. We have plenty of students who go into medicine. We have plenty of students who go into business. We have plenty of students who become scientists or poets or writers. But we like to think, and, and what we see from our students is that they do this in a way that is sort of their, their own path. Uh, it's, a, it's an individual decision and an individual program. And that's what's so exciting about working here in the academic side is we can design classes and design support systems and design events, uh, large scale in, this, in the field, in the city, in, in the businesses, uh, design those events that will support that kind of curiosity and that kind of exploration. So um, I'm, we'll be happy to take your questions, of course, and I really look forward to uh, seeing some of your students come our way.
very soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joe. That was great. Uh, and thank you for, for having me. Um, hello, everyone. It's good to see you. Uh, my name is Mark Cioli. Uh, a brief review of the guest list tells me that many of you uh, know who I am, but for those of you who don't, I am the Executive Director of Admissions and Recruitment at the CUNY Central Admission Office. Uh, it's really my office's goal to assist students through the application process and help them find their best fit at CUNY. Uh, and so we work very closely with, with all of the colleges, not just Macaulay, but uh, I am am delighted today to be here with you. I hope your year is off to a great start. Um, on behalf of my office, I just want to wish you all the best as you start your new year uh, and really express our gratitude for the work that you do. Um, we, could, we could not do the work that we do without all of you and the support that you provide your students. So it's, it's very important that you understand our gratitude for that. Uh, I also want to reassure you that we are here for you. Uh, we know that it has been a difficult past 18 months, given the conditions of the pandemic and remote learning uh, and all that good stuff. It's a, a challenge that we have shared at CUNY, uh, and we want you to know that, that we're here for you um, in any number of ways to support you and your students through the process. It is my task today to recall your attention to the CUNY application process in general, but also to the Macaulay specific process and a few of the changes that we have seen instituted this year. So I'm going to walk you through a few visuals of those changes here momentarily. Uh, but first, I want to call your attention to the CUNY application process, which many of you are, are intimately familiar with. Uh, you send us your students in very large numbers and, and for that we're very grateful. Uh, you can find the CUNY application at our website uh, through a number of doorways. But if you type in cuny.edu slash apply, that will take you to an instruction page um, and the application is, is a short click away from there. Uh, you will recall that as students click on the freshman application link to start their application, they are taken to a survey. Uh, I'm actually going to demonstrate that for you here because some of the important changes are reflected there. So if you'll bear with me while I share my screen. Okay. So what you see before you here is our CUNY application landing page. Now, if a student clicks start the application, which I'm about to do here, it will take you to a brief questionnaire. Now this is to uh, sort students based off the application that they are completing. So. Most of your students, in fact, I, I wager to bet all of your students have not yet graduated high school, so they'll be completing the freshman application. So they will simply complete the freshman application link here. Once they do that, they will get another option. Now you will note down here on the left, my cursor circling it, the Macaulay Honors application has some language here to remind students of some of the changes. I briefly want to review that language with you. I think it's important. This application, the honors application, will allow you uh, to choose your choice to be considered for the honors college. You can choose up to six four-year colleges for general admissions. You can select one college choice from a Macaulay honors consideration after that. And there's a reminder that the deadline is now November 16th. More on both of these changes in a second. So a student will select then the Macaulay Honors application. And you see the language changes again to focus solely on the honors information. Student clicks, ne clicks next, and that takes them to a page where they register their application account with CUNY. That takes about two to three minutes for a, a savvy student, and then they're into the application and they can begin filling out their application accordingly. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now for the website and open up the visuals I have prepared for you today. So I hope all can see that. So what are the changes for the Macaulay applicants? First, I want to go over a few key dates 
that are important for you and your students to be aware of. The first is that the application is already live. September 1st was the go live date for our fall 2022 application. So students can begin applying even now. I know many of you are just back to school, um, but if you have any students that are eager to get started, the application is live and they can begin creating their application account and submitting their application. The new deadline for the Macaulay Honors application is now November 16th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You all will also recall that Macaulay requires uh, two letters of recommendation and a character reference letter. Those two recommendations are due December 10th. And the character reference letter gives you a little more time and that's due January 15th. Students will be notified after, Macaulay, uh, after the Macaulay Colleges do their review on March 16th. Now, generally speaking, students who have applied for general admissions to CUNY typically begin hearing in February, but students won't hear from Macaulay until March 16th. So those are a few key dates. Uh, I wanna pause here and talk about a few pro tips that I wanna share with you before moving on to the differences within the application itself. The first pro tip is that we really encourage students to apply early. Um, nothing groundbreaking, but as all of you know, that students can add recommenders to the Macaulay application. Those recommenders aren't notified by the application itself that a student has added them to the application until a student clicks submit. So we encourage students to submit early because that gives their recommenders a heads up well before the deadline that they will need to provide a recommendation for those students. Once a student submits, they can go back into their application and do three main functions. Um, now, this is another reason why we encourage students to submit early, because even though they may not have finished their essays, they may not have added all of their recommenders, they may not have polished up their resume that they're going to submit with their application, they can do all of those things after they have applied and submitted, right? So students can go back in and add recommenders to an application after they submit it. They can go back in and upload supporting materials, whether that's an essay, whether that's a writing sample, whether that's a resume, uh, or anything else they want the CUNY Admissions Committee to review. Uh, students can also go back into their application and pay for the application or apply a fee waiver. Uh, we know at University Admissions that many of you rely on the fee waivers that we distribute to high schools to then distribute to your students so they can apply to CUNY at no charge. We have yet to distribute those fee waivers this year, but our intent is to distribute them to all schools in the early part of October and no later than the middle part of October, giving you plenty of time to apply them to your students' records. So again, just a reminder that students can go back in and submit letters, submit their recommenders, add supporting material to the application and pay for their application or apply a CUNY fee waiver after they have submitted. Uh, so just a few pro tips for you uh, that may help facilitate the application process. So let's move on to, the in, to inside the application and show you what changes you will see there. Uh, most importantly, is the page when students select their Macaulay choice. Uh, now, all of you who've used the CUNY application before know that just after a student has completed their bio demo information, they are asked to select their college and program choices to CUNY generally. Uh, so that question comes just before the one you're seeing on your screen. Students can add up to six college and program choices. Once they add those choices and advance to the next page, they're going to see this question. It's the Macaulay Honors College Campus Choice question. Now in the past, students would select two Macaulay College Honors options. This year, however, students will only be able to select one campus selection. And you see that question here. The question asked from a list of colleges I selected on the previous page, please consider me for Macaulay Honors College at the Macaulay Participating Colleges. Students can make one selection and this is a required question. The next question, which is also a required question, reads thusly. 
If I am not accepted into the Macaulay Honors College at the campus I have selected above, I would like to be considered for admission to another Macaulay participating campus. Now this question will allow colleges and the Macaulay Honors College to work together to ensure that students who have not been accepted to their initial college choice quite possibly will have the option of review by another honors college at CUNY, um, excuse me, another Macaulay program at CUNY. Um, so that's the real change uh, this year in the selection of college choices. Uh, and I, I wanna remind you also that we will have time for question and answers if some of this is confusing. Uh, but just to reiterate, students will now have one choice of Macaulay Honors College. They will then be able to indicate whether they are interested in having their application reviewed should they not be accepted to that initial choice by another Macaulay Honors Program. So let's move on to the essay prompts. Uh, this is also a change from last year. When a student selects the college and program for Macaulay, they will see that there are two writing requirements, an essay and a writing sample. The essay prompt is this, describe an experience that either demonstrates your character or helped to shape it. That's the essay prompt for Macaulay. Macaulay is also asking for a writing sample. And the prompt for the writing sample is this, write on a topic of your choice. It may be something you have written already, something that addresses a different prompt, such as another college essay or academic assignment, or maybe an essay of your own design. And then Macaulay offers three considerations for students to keep in mind as they select their writing sample. So again, not a huge change from last year, uh, but it is a change you and your students should be aware of. I'd also like to remind folks that once students have selected their college and major and made their Macaulay choices and they continue to navigate through the application, they will come to a screen that allows them to submit their supporting documents. When they get to that page in the application, they will see two prompts for the Macaulay requirements, the essay and the writing sample. And it is there that they can upload those requirements. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, that's the extent of what I have to share with you today, but I would like to finish up uh, before we open it up for questions by reminding all of you that we are available to you. Uh, I want to direct you to uh, two links where you can get in touch with us centrally should your students have uh, any issues with the application or if they are interested in events. And so I'm going to post those links here. So I have posted those links and I, I wanna draw your attention to them. Uh, one is to our CUNY Counselor Cornell. That is uh, an application landing page that has a, a wealth of resources for guidance counselors uh, as they help their students navigate the college search process. Um, we will alert you there to any updates and policy. Um, last year, for example, this is where we posted our testing policy, um, which many of you know uh, now means that CUNY is test free. We no longer require the SAT or the ACT uh, for the application. Uh, and in fact, if students provide it, we do not consider it in the admission process. Um, so for those of you who aren't aware of that, um, please be aware of that policy. I'd also like to direct your attention to our Welcome Center landing page, which has our contact information, including our help desk for students who are applying, for counselors who have questions to answer, and for Macaulay Honors applicants who have questions to answer. Um, we partner with the Macaulay Honors College uh, to answer students' questions uh, through their help desk. And so we work very closely with them um, to align our resources there. I'd also point out that on our contact us page at the Welcome Center, we have a number of events already posted. Um, I would encourage you to share those events with your colleagues in the guidance community. I would also encourage you to share those events with your students because many of them are student facing and they are tutorials and workshops on helping students apply right now to CUNY colleges. So I'm gonna wrap up my remarks again by, by thanking each and every one of you for the work that you do. Uh, I wanna once again, thank our Macaulay colleagues uh, for their work in putting together this, um, this conference. Uh, I think it is off to a good start and I'm eager to see it continue. Thank you. Mark, thank you for that. Uh, Joe, I'll have you rejoin us if, you're, if you still have some time for the, for the Q&A. 
We've got a couple that we've already flagged to answer live and there's some other ones queued up. So um, I will start here with a question we got asking for a little bit more color on how being a Macaulay student at a given campus differs from being a regular student. Could you, Joe, could you elaborate a little bit on that one? Yeah, I'm happy to, Jeffrey. So our students were really kind of proud of the way that they manage this dual identity, that they are citizens of, or, or students on their campus and, and are fully involved on their campus. But being a Macaulay student adds a, a kind of a, a, a extra layer of enhancement. So their advisor uh, is assigned as a Macaulay advisor. All the advisors work for us centrally at Macaulay. Uh, and, and in addition to that, we have a unique academic curriculum that all our students take in their first four semesters. These are only for Macaulay students. These courses are designed only for those uh, students and they are small discussion seminars. Uh, the, the first is called the Arts in New York City and involves in, in normal times, lots of trips out to performances and, and galleries and, and experiences like that. Uh, the second is the People of New York and that focuses on using data to understand immigration patterns and neighborhood dynamics and how the, the people have shaped this city and, and all that, uh, that goes into that. Then in the second year, our students all take a, a seminar called Science Forward, which is about using science and the tools of science to uh, sort of approach the grand challenges uh, facing the, 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 the community and the planet. And then they finish in their sophomore year with uh, our seminar four, shaping the future of New York City. This is a urban policy class asking students to really take what they've learned in their other seminars and pull that together to devise solutions to specific problems uh, facing the city and the community. So these courses are unique to Macaulay students. Their other courses could be taken with other students on their campuses, other honor students. That It's really kind of depends on what their, their major is and what they're interested in doing. The other thing just quickly is that Macaulay students have this cross campus community where they are not just Macaulay students on their campus, they're also Macaulay students in our eight campus consortium, which means they're entitled to and often do enjoy special events and clubs and activities here at our West 67th Street townhouse or at various locations throughout the city that are for only Macaulay students across the university, across our eight campuses. So they really kind of unite as a Macaulay cohort, dispersed, but still connected. Joe, thanks for that. Um, I see there's a quick housekeeping question. A couple of different people have asked whether the recording of the webinar will be available, and yes, it will. Um, we will make this uh, available. We'll send an email with the link, but it'll also be available via our website. So for those of you that asked that, wanted to let you know that. Um, Mark, I see there's a question about how long the SAT blind policy is going to apply at CUNY. You want to address that one? Absolutely, Jeffrey. Thank you very much. So CUNY is currently test blind through 2023, right? So through the fall of 2023 cycle. No extension has yet been offered on that policy, um, but CUNY is, is right now doing some analysis on, on the outcomes of, of our policy. Um, before, before making recommendations for future policies. So stay tuned to um, our communications for updates in that regard. But for now, students who are applying for 2023 um, will be test-free. They're not required to supply an SAT or an ACT. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> um, of, the, of the application schedules and deadlines, a number of people also asked uh, about what our thoughts were on moving up the deadline from December 1st to November 16th. Um, I'm happy to address this in Mark, if you wanna jump in also, that's fine, because it's something that we, we talked about a fair amount. Um, for one thing, the, the November 16th deadline puts the Macaulay application deadline clearly in the, the school of colleges and universities that have early decision deadlines that some of the more elite colleges that many of our students are also applying to. So this fits within the time frame that we know many of the students are working on applications. One thing that we did to try and relieve some of the pressure, as you notice, the two writing samples, we have one essay prompt that we provide, but the second essay could be something that the students have written for another college application. We don't really care. The idea is that it's, it's going to give us a good sample of their writing. They don't need to do it specially for us. 
So we've tried to make the application, you know, as as relatively pain free as possible. Um, the other thing is that moving the application deadline up by the two weeks for us ensures that we can provide the kind of holistic review of the applications that has been the hallmark of the Macaulay program since it launched. And as Macaulay has become a, a better known top choice for, for many um, college bound seniors, we've had a, a big increase in our applications. So frankly, part of moving that deadline up was to make sure that we had adequate time to really properly review all the applications. Mark, anything you'd wanna add on your end? Well, Jeffrey, I think you covered that, but I think most of these folks understand that the, the processing of applications and application materials for the joint effort between us and the colleges. And so, um, you know, we, we uh, worked very closely with Macaulay as they, as they made this decision and, and concur that we wanna give our students as much of an opportunity as possible between um, the application deadline and, and the time they start reviewing applications on campus to get their information in uh, and in the appropriate place for that review. Um, another question that uh, one of our colleagues flagged is a question on any advice we can offer for first generation and or undocumented student applicants. Um, Mark, I'll turn that one over to you and <clears throat> Joe, maybe you wanna chime in. So I can unmute now. So of course, CUNY welcomes um, all applicants and many of our students are in fact um, first generation uh, and undocumented students. So those students should apply um, as any other student to the university, um, you know, and provide um, CUNY with, with the, their application information. Uh, rest assured that the admission office takes very seriously um, data privacy and we use our information for admission purposes only. Um, so we know that, that many undocumented students and their families uh, are sometimes a little reluctant to raise their hand uh, and their status in, in a CUNY application, um, but please um, rest assured that uh, they should use us as a resource and they can and trust us to hold that information um, as securely as we can um, as we go through the application process. And uh, we do have some, some resources on our website um, that point students to uh, some financial support uh, above and beyond uh, the normal course of information that they they might receive in the application process um, and so i would encourage you to explore that there and, and um, we'll make sure to highlight that on our website um, for counselors um, so they know all of the resources available to those students and those those particularly vulnerable populations of students right thanks mark and i i would chime in and add that um you know I, our open houses that are really designed for students are are really terrific for first generation students or undocumented i mean you can attend them from the privacy of your Zoom connection. Um, and mostly what prospective students get to do is hear from current students um, talking about what it's like to be a student at Macaulay. And there's an opportunity to answer, to ask questions just like you're asking questions now. Um, so that's a, that's a great resource. We typically do one or more of the open houses a month and we'll typically have one or two info sessions a month um, which, which again will feature an alum or a student speaking about the particulars often of applying. So those are great resources that are available to first generation students and, and undocumented students. Um, I see a question here. Um, so uh, Deborah asks, if the student is not accepted to their first choice at Macaulay, uh, we mentioned that they, can, they have an opportunity to be accepted to another college by answering yes to the additional question. If answered yes, can you please describe that process? Um, sure, we can describe that a little bit in broad strokes. This is our first year doing that, um, to be clear. So we're, we're figuring that process out as it goes right now. But if, uh, if the student is not accepted into their first choice of Macaulay, but they're willing to be considered at other campuses, then the admissions team that are reviewing the applications will share those with the other campuses that may be, well, that may be looking to, to fill out their classes or that you know, have programs that might be of particular interest to, to that student. You know, we, we eliminated the second choice option because frankly, a number of our campuses would not actually consider people that if they listed them as second choice and some of the campuses would. So we wanted to be really transparent to the applicants. We didn't want you to be able to put a second choice if most of the second choices wouldn't consider second choice applicants. Um, this is a, a more fair way to do that. 
And it's, it's a way for a, a student who really is interested in the Macaulay program, but maybe more neutral about the campus to uh, increase their, their odds of, of getting into a Macaulay program. Um, looking over the questions here. Um, so uh, we did have a, a one, one question on the, the nature of the tuition scholarship. Um, I'm not sure if we, we covered that exactly, but Macaulay is tuition free for New York State residents for the full four years of the undergraduate education, regardless of, of family income. The Macaulay scholarship is last dollar in. So if there are Pell Grants awarded, those are taken, those are taken first. But net for the student, there's no tuition cost at all. In addition to the full tuition scholarship for all New York State residents, Macaulay also provides uh, our Opportunities Fund, which is special funding that supports experiential education at Macaulay. I'm not sure, Joe, if you mentioned the, exper the experiential learning requirement, but to receive a Macaulay degree, in addition to taking the honor seminars, all Macaulay students need to participate in a, an approved experiential learning opportunity. Um, and typically that's either a study abroad or away, um, it could be an internship, or it could be independent research. There's a, a formal application that all the students go through typically after their, their second year. And Macaulay provides funding to help underwrite those costs from $1,500 up to right now about $5,000. And those grants are provided regardless of where the student is a resident of. So even if you have a student that's applying from out of state, they are still fully eligible to receive funding through the opportunity spot. Um, that touches a little bit on can students study abroad, one of the, the questions that we have um, floating out there. Um, you know, pre-pandemic, many of our students did study abroad. Um, it, was a, it was an important feature of Macaulay education. Since the pandemic has, has come about, we, there's been no travel. Um, it's not approved right now at CUNY. We're, we're hoping that that might change in the spring. We're watching to see how that will happen. Um, we certainly hope that by next fall, travel will be uh, possible again. And by the time this next prospective class of students becomes juniors, um, we very much hope the pandemic will be long behind us and study abroad will once again be an important part of Macaulay education. Joe, you wanna, you wanna chime in a little bit on, on the study abroad and how that's been part of uh, Macaulay? Yeah, thanks, Jeffrey, sure. The, uh, you know, as you say, we've, we've had this disappointing time in so many ways uh, very recently, and, and we really hope that's gonna be over soon. But in normal times, I would say the majority of our students end up studying abroad, at least for, for a period of time. Uh, because our students tend to have very rigorous academic programs, summer and, and winter uh, sessions tend to be more popular than, than full semester study abroad programs. But we've sent uh, students to, at this point, every continent except Antarctica. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll get a student uh, in, in Antarctica soon. Uh, we, we once tried to make a, a map with all the locations where every Macaulay student had studied abroad, and it just got too crowded. There were too many pins on the map. We really see the value, and it, it's actually uh, one of the graduation requirements, uh, along with another experiential, or either that or another ex experiential learning. But, uh, you know, we like to say that when you study at Macaulay, it's a chance to study anywhere in the world and still be in New York City for most of the time. Great, thank you, Joe. Um, Mark, we've got a technical question on supporting materials in the application. Um, Joshua asks that if a student submits their application before November 16th, what's the recommended deadline they have for coming back to upload supporting materials? So no, um, November 16th uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the recommended deadline for them to have their supporting materials uploaded any recommenders that they're going to add, um, you know that the recommenders will have an extended amount of time to get those recommendations in. Um, but the application itself, um, after that deadline, will then prevent students from going back and making uh, changes. Um, there's sort of a follow-up question to that is we, we get a fair number of students who apply to the Macaulay Honors College and then decide that 
they don't wish to be reviewed for the college and want to apply generally to other programs at CUNY. Um, those students will need to contact us directly in admissions because that requires some administrative action. So I would encourage you to, to be in touch with us if that is the case. Um, but just to reiterate, while students should, can and should submit their application prior to the 16th, they should have all of their documents in a row and uploaded by the 16th of November at 6 p.m. Great. Thank you for that. Um, I've got another question here. All right, here's a, a, a technical question which I can answer. Um, Anne is asking what the acceptance rate is for Macaulay Honors. Um, and that's a, that's a slightly complicated question to, to, to answer only because that rate will vary from year to year. And it also varies from campus to campus. I can tell you that last year, um, just under 15% of all of our applicants were offered a Macaulay Honors College spot. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that ranged from as few as 8% on one campus to as high as 28% on another. But on average, it's, it's about 15%. Um, you know, the, the, some of the larger campuses um, like Hunter and Baruch, um, it's, it's closer to 10%. Um, there was a question also on the application um, uh, from Mary. She wanted to hear a little bit more about the character reference letter. Specifically, she asked whether someone who provided a recommendation letter can also provide the character reference letter, or does it need to be a new person entirely? I, I can answer that. Yes, the character reference letter could be provided by somebody who also is, is one of the regular academic reference providers. Um, our intent was not to make this burdensome and require a third separate person, but really the character reference letter is addressing different questions than the, uh, than the, academic, than the academic letters ask. Um, and and there's, it, it's really quite broad as far as who can answer that, but it can absolutely be answered by somebody who's provided a regular reference. We just want to make sure they address the prompts on the character reference letter. Um, question from Molly about how the major program selection influences student selection for Macaulay. Mark, could you speak to that one a little bit? Sure, Jeffrey. So obviously students, when they choose a program at the college, they can only choose programs available at that Macaulay Honors College. Um, you know, each Macaulay College uh, is reviewing applicants um, and taking into consideration applicants holistically, right? So uh, major selection uh, is certainly something that plays into that. Uh, but, you know, I would encourage students and, and I encourage students to do this generally, they should uh, apply and select a program that they're genuinely interested in. Um, you know, choosing a college, even a Macaulay College is very often about choosing the best fit for that student. Uh, and so we encourage students to, to choose the programs that they're interested in and express their interest um, through a number of ways, uh, whether it's their academic achievements, whether it's through their extracurricular activities, um, whether it's through their choice of, of essay submission um, or writing sample submission. So uh, again, that's a, a, a specific to the, to the review committee, um, but again, I encourage students to sort of put their best foot forward and choose the, the program that they're, they're most interested in. Great, thank you. Um, we've got a question, it's a follow-up question really on what happens if the student's not selected for their first choice. Uh, Irina asks whether a student who didn't get their first choice potentially hear from more than one Macaulay Honors College at other schools then, or would it only be from one of them? And, you know, Irina, as I mentioned, this is our first time doing this. Um, at least for this go round, I'm relatively certain that if they're if they're offered a spot at a different campus, it will just be one other campus. Um, there won't be multiple offers from the campuses. We'll be trying to coordinate that centrally. Um, and you know, there's not, there's not an opportunity for the student to, to rank and say, well, if it's from this school, yes, and that school, no, they would just get the offer and they would accept it or not. Um, depending on how things go this year, we, we, we may look at ways to improve that. Um, you know, one thing that occurred to me that I, I didn't mention in the opening remarks, um, because this is our first time doing this, we really welcome feedback from you guys. Feedback both on, you know, how, how well this session has worked, but also if there are things that you'd like us to consider 
um, please don't be shy about sharing them with us. You can, you can share them right now. Um, even if we don't get to all the questions before we close, we'll still have all these questions so we can follow up afterwards. But you can also contact us directly. And um, at the end of the session, we'll put up a slide that will introduce you know, two of our key members of the enrollment management recruitment team at Macaulay. Um, I'm sure many of you know them. So Marianne Bufaltainen, who's our Director of Enrollment Management, and Ali Kamara, who's our Assistant Director of Enrollment Management, um, are, are very much available to answer individual questions. Um, we'll put their, their emails up here afterwards, and they are certainly a resource for all of you. Um, let's see what other ones we have here. That um, So we have a question here about um, whether a student could submit an SAT, ACT scores, even if we're not if it'll hinder their acceptance, it won't hinder it. We just won't look at it. It'll just be discarded. So just don't don't bother. Um, we're really SAT blind. It's not SAT optional. It's, it's SAT, ACT blind. Will CUNY credits from an early college high school be accepted? How will it affect the freshman program? Will students still be eligible for the seminars you discussed? So Joe, maybe you could answer the seminar question. That's an important one. And Mark, you could address the, the other part about what credits are accepted? Sure, the, the seminars are required for all Macaulay students and they all must be taken in sequence in, in the first uh, four semesters. So it, it doesn't matter if they have early college credits or AP credits or anything else. Uh, those are our cohort building and our uh, really core curriculum. They provide students with skills that we think all honor students really need. So yes, they're still eligible and they're, they're actually required to take every one of those seminars. Thanks, Joe. And just to address the question on the, uh, the bringing in a, of credits, uh, college credits before a student has graduated high school. Um, as you know, students are not just admitted into Macaulay when they're admitted, but they're also admitted into particular college. And so uh, our colleges do award credit for students bringing in college now credit. Um, and other forms of credit, advanced placement, international baccalaureate, and so on. Um, and, and we work closely with students and the colleges to ensure that students are, are getting uh, the maximum amount of credit uh, available to them. Um, what you guys also know is that um, some credit transfers in as general credit towards um, you know, the, the core curriculum, so to speak. Um, some credit, although um, college level may not transfer in as a core credit. And so very often at colleges, there requires an additional level of review of credits um, to apply them toward a specific major, uh, so to speak. Um, and so um, while in some cases it's straightforward, in other cases it's not. And we encourage students who are coming in with a lot of credits to make sure that they're working with their academic advisor post admission to make sure that those credits are awarded appropriately moving forward. Mark, in a similar vein, William uh, Peggy Williams is asking how Chin is handling IB course credits and DPs. So, uh, I mean, similarly, IB, just like advanced placement, um, you know, the colleges have a particular score for which they're going to award uh, credit for classes. Um, and DP, I'm, I'm not up on my, my acronyms, I'm not quite sure what you mean by DP. All right, well, while we see if she chimes back in with uh, what DP is, um, got a question from Christine about the experiential learning opportunity grant. Um, she's asking whether the grant stipend is still up to $7,500 or a new amount. Um, it, it, is a, it is a grant, it's not a stipend, and it hasn't been $7,500 for many years now. So um, what our, our current experiential learning opportunity grants start at $1,500. So every student right now is guaranteed at least a $1,500 grant pending the approval of their application for the experiential learning opportunity. And right now, the highest award that we have is up to $5,000. Um, I had another question I flagged here. Um, so uh, Leslie asks, what the percentage of the total CUNY freshman class is represented by Macaulay students? I, I believe, I, I mean, when I did this math once before, Mark, looking just at the eight campuses that our students come from. And I believe Macaulay accounts for about 4%. Um, so if Macaulay, the Macaulay students are about 4% of the CUNY freshman class at 
the eight campuses that participate in Macaulay. So that's Baruch, Brooklyn City, Hunter, John Jay, Lehman, Queens, College of Staten Island. Um, our students are effectively the top 4% of those campuses. Um, it's a smaller percentage of looking CUNY wide, but we just looked at those. Uh, we have a question here. Will students be considered for general admission at their non Macaulay Honors College schools? I think that's a simple yes, right, Mark? Yes, that's a simple yes. If they've selected uh, a college on the um, initial programs choice page, then they are considered for general admissions to all of those choices that they've selected. And that answers that one also. Great. Um, just scrolling through some of these here. Um, for students who submit a Macaulay application but do not send documents in by the deadline, will CUNY send out a notification of any sort saying they are not be considered for Macaulay anymore? So we do send, we're, we're fairly aggressive with the information that we send out reminding students of the deadline and to get their information in as quickly as possible. Um, of course, there are uh, always exceptions in individual cases, um, and, and we try to work closely with Macaulay to ensure that if a student is delayed for some reason in submitting an essay by a couple of days, that that, that will be considered. Um, um, and then, you know, after the fact, we do communicate with applicants to make sure that they have an option at CUNY, even if they weren't accepted to any of their college choices, um, which, which occasionally happens. Um, so, you know, students should be in touch with us if they have issues getting their documents in um, so we can avoid that situation. But again, if it, if it does occur, we will work with students to make sure that they have a choice, even if it's not at Macaulay. And, and we, we try to reinforce that message when we send out our decision letters. Um, we, we, we have sent out letters to the students who are not accepted. And, you know, we do encourage them to look at other programs at CUNY. Got time for a few more questions here. We wanna be mindful of the time. Um, I have a question here about what happens if students receive full financial aid for attending a CUNY school? What happens to the funding that Macaulay Honors provides? Um, you know, as, as, as I had mentioned, uh, the, the Macaulay scholarship provided by CUNY is a last dollar in scholarship. So if there's a student who's received full financial aid that, that covers the cost of their undergraduate tuition, then that's their scholarship. There's the, 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 the CUNY, the Macaulay scholarship funds are not fungible. Um, you know, our commitment is to make sure that any student who's admitted to Macaulay Honors College from New York State uh, is able to attend tuition free. Um, but we don't redistribute the funds otherwise. Mark, anything you'd add to that? No, nothing I would add, Jeffrey, that's... All right, great. Um, clarif uh, clarification question from Brenda. She wants to find out whether all students in New York State are considered for admission or only New York City seniors. All New York State. The Macaulay Scholarship is good for wherever you are in New York State. It, it, we, we only admit students directly to Macaulay who haven't been to college before. So there's, there's not, you can't come here if you've done a semester somewhere else already. But, you know, whether you're in Plattsburgh or Buffalo or Rochester or Montauk um, or any of the five boroughs, um, the Macaulay scholarship is fully available to you. And, and we do have students that come from out of state. You know, we have students from North Carolina, from Maine, from Connecticut and New Jersey. Um, so, you know, we, we welcome students from across the country, but because our scholarship is covered by the state of New York, basically, we, we don't provide that scholarship if you're out of state. Uh, there's a question here whether a student can reapply. The student has accepted an offer, however, they decided to take a gap year, they want to try for Macaulay again. Mark, what's the answer on that one? So as long as they haven't taken any additional college courses or enrolled somewhere else, the student could reapply again as an incoming freshman. Um, I also wanna just quickly answer a few questions uh, to clarify. So one of the um, questions coming in was, um, please clarify again the, the standardized test-free policy or the test line policy. Uh, I mentioned that it runs through 2023, but that's the spring of 2023. So 
The policy applies for the fall of 22, so applicants who are seniors this year. Um, and we have many students who, who graduate and apply for the spring. So the spring of 23, the policy still applies, but no decision has been made yet for the fall of 23. Um, so that's an important point of clarification. Thank you, uh, Yoon, for bringing that up. Uh, and there was, there was one more question that uh, was asked because I, I think it's important to highlight. Some folks have asked, what is the in-person mix going to be at the university come the spring, um, if there's been any adjustments to those numbers? And we know institutionally that it's the goal of the university to have um, up to 70% of our courses in person for the spring. And so that's our goal for the spring. Obviously that may change for the fall, which changes the, um, changes the calculus for students um, then. And so we'll, we'll be certain to keep the community updated um, should, should the mix change for the following fall, the fall of 2022. And Mark, I would add just on the Macaulay side, we only accept applications in the fall. So while CUNY does have applications for programs in the spring, for Macaulay, the only time we consider students coming in is the fall application deadline. Um, so it's just this fall that we know for certain will be SAT, ACT blind. Next fall, we don't know. It's, it's, if, if it were up to Macaulay Honors College, the answer would be no, it wouldn't be required, but it is not the decision of Macaulay Honors College. That's really a university decision that's taken more broadly. Um, let's see what else we have here. I think we've worked our way through most of the questions. Um, we've got a question on GPA range and region scores that we're looking for. Um, you know, typically the, the, the student GPAs are, are usually in the low to high 90s. Um, we've had some students that have been admitted with, with GPAs in the 80s, um, but typically it's, you know, low to high 90s. And the region scores I can't speak to. Um, Mark, do you have a beat on that? Yes. I, well, I mean, I don't have an average number of, for region scores by subject for folks, but most Macaulay Honors applicants have, have far exceeded our minimum regents requirements for general admissions. Um, and um, the, the region scores aren't likely a major factor in review uh, by the Honors Committee. The Honors Committee is usually looking um, for, for the overall academic achievement of the student in class over four years, what they've done outside of class, um, their writing ability, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I would add, um, as far as the profile, um, Jeffrey mentioned, you know, the, the average GPA of students is around 95 um, overall GPA. Um, we have recently published an updated profile um, for all of our campuses. Uh, at CUNY, and you can um, find that at the uh, link. Excuse me, I'm gonna I'm gonna link it in here as we as we go through um, for everyone, um, and that will allow you to help students find the best fit for them as they look through the academic profile and see what the average GPA is for students who've been admitted. So we have time for one last question, and I see Brenda sort of reposted this one. It, it addresses a whole different part of the college experience, which is dorming. And specifically, Brenda's asking um, if students want to stay on campus and are eligible for FAFSA and TAP, can those grants be used for room and board? Um, Mark, do you, I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. So um, I'll, I'll punt that one over to you. Um, so the question, the question, no, um, the question was room and board. Um, the Macaulay Award is a tuition scholarship um, used for tuition. And as Jeff, Jeffrey said, it's a last dollar scholarship. So it's not used for room and board. I there you have it. On that, just to add a, a sort of uh, extra, uh, we do have uh, dorming available at some of the campuses and there are sometimes other funds or, or scholarships available to cover that. Uh, but as my colleagues have said, the uh, FAFSA, the TAP, the, the financial aid is used for tuition. Uh, some of our campuses do offer uh, free dorms or reduced price dorms for Macaulay students and even specific floors or areas within the dorms that are uh, limited to Macaulay students. Um, all right, I'll, I'll answer this one last question and then um, we'll have 
uh, are on the screen, we'll put up contact information for people. And we will be making this available, the, the, the webinar um, as a video. Um, and again, we do encourage your feedback. We'll be sending a survey out to all of you. So please do take just a few moments and complete it. It'll help us do a better job with this next time. Um, so the last question I have here is um, some campuses offer interviews, um, but others don't for Macaulay. Do we have a list on that? That, that About half of our campuses actually do interviewing. Um, I know that John Jay does, Lehman does, Hunter does, and um, I'm missing one. Um, not Baruch. CSI. Um, CSI. CSI, thank you. Yeah, and then the College of Staten Island. So those are the four that, that currently do have interviews as part of the application process. Um, thanks very much, uh, Joe and Mark, for making today's session possible. Thanks to the staff on the back end who have been busy uh, answering questions in real time as, as, uh, as the, the session has gone on. And a great big thanks to all of you for spending this hour with us, learning more about Macaulay Honors College. Uh, very much hope we'll hear more from you and um, hope to see your students in our, uh, in our application files.